Welcome to Spring Break. Spring Break podcast. It is now three fifty-seven. We've been on Spring Break for thirty-seven minutes. Jack, how does it feel? I'm exhausted. How are oh you? Oh my god! <laughs> Woo! The last Wait, you're exhausted, like because of Spring Break, or just because of the time leading up to it? Leading up. Yeah. We we call the um the ambulance? musical word. Do we call the ambulance? <laughs> uh, the speed dial. Um, the musical word for this is called the retardando. Because leading up to a break, time seems to slow down. Yeah, it does. And that's music. That's called a retardando. You slow mm. down the tempo. But it slows down, right? The last... It's like me, like, after 6 p.m., I'm a retardando. You, yeah. <laughs> I just got... <laughs> and then 6.20, Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's out. Um, no, the last the last two weeks... Well, last week kind of went going... Like, it went quick because of Carnival, right? Our spring variety show. And then this week, it's like Monday... Tuesday, Wednesday, Day. and Thursday started last week. Yes. Right, yeah, right. we actually went back in time. Yeah, it, yeah, that is that is true. I don't know that phenomenon. Yep. I guess it probably happened is at, at Christmas as a child. Yes. And then the the um, the good part, the break part, is yeah. in the cello rondo, right? It is true. It Toward is the true. end, you're like, oh, it's Friday. Oh, my gosh, Saturday. Wait, Sunday? I'm yeah. in bed already? My alarm set? What? It's but true. we're at the we're at the we just passed go we're at the prime, it's a good feeling. Yeah. Right. And we wanted to record now. Yeah. Because we're just so busy, we just don't uh, schedule. Jack, we are we're so super busy. busy. Oh my gosh, spring break, and here we are. Okay, so well, this <laughs> is what. Oh, oh, no, I, no, is, I know where you're is, going. This, this is, is good. good. This, this is, is good. This is good. Uh, we're talking spring break, but the theme for today is Disney World. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, yeah. Disney okay. World, which so I w- disclaimer, I've only been to land. I've not been to the, world. You went with the land to. I was land for the half the day for the band, and then I played nurse the other half oh, of the day. We went with the marching oh, band because you were nurse in the morning. I sorry. was nurse in the morning. Yeah. We had some children that were sick when we took the marching band to California. We had to have some adults stay back in the hotel. Some kids um, were not feeling well, so we did a little tag team. But but we did you know the Disney World. Disneyland, and then and we the did Star Universal, Wars thing. Universal oh yeah, Universal. That was cool. And we did um, Galaxy's Edge. That's what that's called. That was cool. Um, yeah, it was a good time. So Disneyland. That's today. Yeah. So I was thinking about you know when you go to Disneyland, Disney World, or some other theme parks, there's so much energy and professionalism put in so that your experience is airtight. That you you get to experience the the characters and their prime costumes and smiles and there's never a cigarette butt on the sidewalk right and there's no gum smattered on the concrete and you know there's never any garbage and you never see the garbage being taken out like it's always just clean and the flower beds are always fresh right there's always wonderful music and the light bulbs are never burned out right it's a magical place it's a magical place so i always started to think maybe it'd be fun to talk about our classrooms in comparison to Disney, like when you th- when you think about going to a an amusement park like the Magic Kingdom, you talk about the whole experience. It's an immersion experience in this. So what is it like being an experience in our classroom? And I wonder what that's like for the students. And what does it look like from our side for the things that we want to take care of? Like what are the pieces of trash on the floor and what are the flowers that need to be deadheaded or what are the shiny light bulbs you know what what is it in our classroom that we are wanting to convey to our students to say we want you to have a great overall experience you know this is something too that right now like i need to hear for myself (laughs) right like we're in like the like march march is i think the hardest month of the school year (laughs) really maybe uh, let me rephrase i think it's the slowest no, that's not either. either. I, March is a challenge. I think March is challenging. Be- yeah, but see, I have, I have my birthday, my wife's birthday, St. Patrick's Day, and there's March Madness. Well, so good for you, <laughs> Steve. Good for you <laughs> that you a- got your life figured out, and it's great. But I have a summer birthday. March is cold. Daylight savings time happens somewhere in there, and it all gets messed up. Good for you that Kentucky got out in the first round. All you got left is your little Purdue Boilermakers <laughs> bandwagon. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I went to Butler University. I'm sorry that our <laughs> basketball team couldn't hold it together. <laughs> wow. Gosh. Well, I, I see. I think I think March went quick because it was it was winter half the time and it was spring half the time. What are you talking, dude? It's 40 degrees right now. It's like tw- it was 28 this morning. Right. It's, it's winter. But I said it's spring half the time, winter half the time. Like two weeks ago or last week, it was 70 I know, degrees. We're moving backwards I in know, weather. That's it why it's goes hard. Back and forth. No. <laughs> no. Gosh. But then we had carnival. We had a lot to do. So since there was a That's lot why to do, it's hard. it seemed like it went fast because there was a lot to do. It was it was hard. Like it seemed like there was a lot. I think one week went fast, but I think that leading up to it, like January and February, are cold, are dark. We're all tired. Everyone, it's like grumpy grumps, right. and you like try really hard to sprinkle in the goodness in your room, and the kids are like, "What time do we get out of here?" And you're like, "Stop! Shut it down Stop. now! Say my name! Stop the podcast! Say my name! <laughs> what? What the are podcast? You, yeah, what the podcast? Sorry. What the podcast?" But March, it's like it's slow. April, you know, you're post spring break, you're fresh, and you're like sprinting to the finish. Wait, do you really feel fresh after spring break? I do. Do you? No. Why not? I feel lonely after spring break. <laughs> I don't you like cue like, the sad piano music right now. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like you come back and you're just like, it takes a while for the school mojo to get back going. I feel the exact. So opposite. that's what like I come back no. in and I'm like, hey, and it's like, wah, no, dude, wah. spring break. My hair. Okay, like if you're watching a reel, or if you need a haircut, it, dude. You look like I'm, Jim Carrey, like somebody. I have. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow, so. Good. You look like a crazy Jim Carrey, like when he's in Liar Liar, he's in the court scene. Kind of <laughs> well, Great movie. Um, I this is what I feel like because there's so much going on in school, like so much, and it's not even just like my stuff, but like you know the pops concert I usually play for, yeah. the orchestra tour and filming and video stuff. We're getting going. Anyway, this is besides the point. Um, I totally derailed that. I apologize, you did, you did. but. That was awful. Okay. Okay. Back on track. Disney. Back to Disney. Okay. Um, Disney. The other thing too, you said like, what is our trash? What is our magic? What all that stuff? It's in Disney. You know, you're kind of thinking about what does this look like for the ten-year-old um, boy who's here for the first time? What does this look like for the sixteen-year-old girl that's coming back for her fourth trip? Mm-hmm. What does this look like for the family of five? What does this look like for the like honeymoon couple? Right? Yeah. There's th- and we have the same things in our classrooms. Like, what does this look like for Susie? What yeah. does this look like for Johnny? Yeah, right? Yeah, 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 same yeah. idea too. Okay, yep. back to you, Steve. All right. Thank you. Thank you for letting me answer my own question. Okay. Um. um so. I think it is important. This is like an uplifting moment for teachers, Jack. I think it is important to look at the long haul, the overall arc of our classroom. Okay. And not to and, and meaning that when you have a bad day in the classroom, that it doesn't mean the whole process stinks, right? And that like we have to shut down the park. Right? <laughs> look at you. It's a good thing we have our micro. There's a drum set just going to town right now. And if this were the olden, day, olden days of the recording, you could hear the entire thing. But we got we got mics now, dude. They can't hear that okay. stuff. So, it, um, so there is some um, comfort to that, knowing that if things go, you know, if you have a bad day, I think it. Um, thinking about the students having their memories of your classroom, or just, you know, getting away from the classroom, and maybe like um, a year from now, and they think about your class. Like, what is it that they're going to remember? Or what is the emotional response that comes back to them? Right? That's the long haul. That's yeah, the long haul. They're not going to remember the weird days, the off days. Right. They remember the, the majority, right? right? So I, I, I think I'm very, I am conscious of that. So you feel good at the macro. I want to feel, I, th- I think I feel pretty good at the I mean, macro. I think you would feel good about your macro. But, so let's talk about some of those things that we want to do and Disclaimer, this is not like, you know, Disney, I know that one of our colleagues, Brian Golden, who has been on Chops with us, talked about, I don't know if he was backstage one time at Disney or if he knew somebody that was backstage at Disney, but they like caught Cinderella like on a smoke break. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, hey, what, what you what doing? What the ball? Hey, hey, hey. what's this pumpkin what's doing this, here? Why is this slipper made of... Gosh, Gosh, this shoe doesn't even fit. Gosh. Somebody clean the floor. Waiter. <laughs> Go 
gonna get Evan the mouse. You know, it's like, um, <laughs> we so. <laughs> A hey, Cinderella. Yeah, Cinderella. Hey, Cinderella. Come hey, clean hey, this floor. Come on. Who do you um, think you are? Some princess? <laughs> Let's, so I think, yeah, like, so you don't get to see behind the curtain, right? And um, I don't I don't try to, like, hide. I'm not, like, trying to be deceitful and, like, make it so, like, the Magic Kingdom. I, I think trying to make the classroom, like, an authentic experience sure. is yeah, you true. You fake your way through. So... Um, some things that I think about in the Disney experience or things you know, I would want in my classroom or I do want, I do want, I want every student to feel like they're seen. You've made that and you make that clear. I want every student to seem yes. like they're seen and they're heard verbally and musically. Oh, that's good. Um, and then I want to... Make sure that we do something in our time together to some kind of community base, like, um, and not just playing our instruments, but it may, maybe something that we say together, something we chant together, something we sing together, um, a joke that we all have together, but something that kind of engages like us. Question of the day, too. Yeah, like question that kind of the day. thing. Yeah, just yeah, some yeah, sort yeah. of social like a little brain I mean, here, here, here. Right, right. Um, and. Also, I think it's really important. We've talked about this before. Then, when you're when you're talking to students and you have a group of students that you get to know and that you know their history, and maybe you know their family or know their um, some situations that they're going through or their grades or their favorite teachers. Lori Isel, know their dog. You got to yeah, know their siblings. You gotta, yeah, you know what their grandma's yeah, doing. How yeah. they're you know, and you you keep in touch, and so you can like refer to those things in class. And it's not that everybody knows all those inside things, but I think putting it out there is good for other people to hear. Because even if I say, hey, um, Jack, is your is your dad doing okay? Is he feeling okay? It's not like everybody maybe knew that your dad was ill, but it would be like, oh, like he's like he's like thinking about that. You're right. Yes. As an example of, of helping students feel engaged and like included and in, in like being heard. Right. Um, in addition to this thing, I'm going to use you as an example from like 30 minutes ago. Um, we're, we're in like the um, try and get in our house clean before we leave for spring break. And when I say house clean, I mean like we can play our music. And we're working on this um, piece of music that we just handed out to the top band here at, at the high school. And Steve started teaching today. And something started like possessing you because you got like real jacked up. And he like stood on a chair, went like Dead Poet Society on the kids. I did. I he did. did. He like was yelling like... Come on, let's go, come on. <laughs> and they're like, okay, okay, we'll do this. But, I mean, sometimes you need, like, a change of temperature. Yep. And, like, if you're thinking of, like, the, the baritone player in the third row, like, what's that experience like for them? Right. You know, they could be playing the ba, 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 like, right. for 20 minutes straight, and they need something to kind of, like, jolt them and say, let's right. go, I'm right, here. Right, right, right. So that, I thought that was, like, a good example of that. Oh, okay. That, that, was, that was nice. That there's, there's some experience and some magic going, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was like one small example, but okay. just one that came okay, to mind thank you. right away. I'm yep. Appreciate yep. It. Noted. All right. Um, I do think it's important, though, when um, you can jump in on this one, is that like so at Disney, when the lines are really long or if a line is broken or. Um, it, you need something to do. You're right. You need something yeah. to do. And there's always also a spin on it like. Yep. You know, Space Mountain's closed for the next two hours. We're sorry that you just waited in line for four hours, but go visit. It's a small world after all. You know, there's like some look over here. Like there's some, there's always a plan. Yeah, like there's right. some out. Right. Yeah. And so um, I, I do think about that. Like some sometimes. Well, I mean, if you have a if you're in a classroom and there seems to be maybe a little stress with a student. Um, maybe a behavior situation or an attitude situation where you just don't feel like the temperature is right of the class. Like you just. Oh, yeah. Right? But then you, you can choose to, you know, like stay in the line that's not moving or you can like choose to go to a different ride and just kind of adjust and, you know, go to a different part of the park that is up and yes. running. Like you need to leave some things behind at some point and move right. on, or you d acknowledge it in some different way. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, uh, another phrase you taught me very early on in my teaching, instead of 
And see, I always butcher it because I get it backwards. Instead of taking the sail out of the wind, take the wind out of the sail. Take the wind out of the sail. And I think we've talked about that before. But sometimes you just kind of got to cut bait if there's some stressful moment with the kid and, and find some creative ways to get around that and do what you got to do. And Right? Right. Instead of just kind of pile driving it and just kind of... <laughs> You know, beating your head against the wall. And that, yeah. that's not to say that you don't have, like, your non-negotiables. Sure. Right? Sure. Right. We're not saying, like, you know, s- safety doesn't matter and, you know, respect in a, um, you know, to specific people. That doesn't matter. And, you know, keeping everybody, yeah, safe. But that that's not that. But and, and overarching with this, too, if you might be thinking to yourself right now, like, man, I'm just not, like, I don't know if I have the chops to do that. Like, I don't know if I have like mm-hmm. the the skills to be like really creative and like think of my classroom as that. Like, that sounds like it would take a lot of time. Um, possibly, maybe yes. But if you're intentional about those things, you can find moments for them. Yes. And you created lessons or you've had days that you've had intention that you've thought ahead of time, right? And then you come down and say, here's what I'm doing. And you probably did that more early on in your teaching. Yeah. And then as you went on with your teaching, those moments probably were more... Um, Often, and they kind of revealed themselves to you in the moment. Yes. Less intention was needed because you could you could find those m- right, pieces in the moment. Right, right. Um, we mess with seating charts a lot. Yes. I love doing that. Why is that? Because it it sh- stirs up the snow globe. It's it's part of the experience. Yep. And and part of it, it's it's kind of a shtick, like it's kind of a game, and we do that in band a lot to help kids listen to other kids or mm-hmm. other sections or how the other people are performing it. And I really like doing that in jazz band because mm-hmm. it totally changes the vibe. Um, the saxophones always sit in the front row in right. jazz band, and the trumpets are always in the back row. And they create these personalities yep. based on where they are in the room. And, of course, if you're like a teacher listening, you're like, right, that's why I, I – change the seating right. charts all the time but if you're performing your trumpet's got to be in the back or you can't hear the saxophone right? right but switching those up always seems like an interesting change of pace right and doing that more kind of helps the classroom mojo be more homogenous which is what i want i don't want i don't want there to be a pocket of kids yep. over here doing this yep. and a pocket yep. of, no yep. i want yep. the vibe to be the same yep. and it's consistent from kid to kid and i think that having that as the experience is is like really really helpful and so that's something that i haven't i don't think i didn't do that today but i did switch it up earlier this week and and i sent some kids away to go work and do some other stuff but that that's like part of the experience too um that i'm really into before we pressed record steve talked about um slides that you display for your class like your agenda handouts you give to the class steve speak to me speak to me um, I think Jack and I are in similar lanes when it comes to handouts and Google Slides or, power or PowerPoint presentations. Um, the Kevin Malone, you know, why use many why words? Why use when many words when few words do trick? Right. So handy now. Just out. gotta get the onions all comfortable with each. Other. <laughs> I think I messed that each, one up. Yeah, yeah, get to, get to know crossed, each other in the pot. You just cross pollinated episodes <laughs> with the Office. I wonder if we could get Kevin Malone, dude. Out here. Oh my gosh, I Office if anybody cast. Anybody from the Office would. Who would vibe with chops the most from the Office? Okay, Jim. I don't want Jim on here. Why? He's too smart. Jim. Yeah. I just want the little like under the radar snark. You want him on here? I would put yeah. Jim on the podcast. I want to hear Kevin go like, <laughs> I want him do that. Angela you know? would roast us. Yeah. She'd be like, you guys are idiots. Yeah. Meredith would want to date you. So that was out of left field. <laughs> well, that's her vibe on the. Okay. Anyway. So I think, um, you know, you go to Disney and it's very clear where to park. It's very clear how to get on the tram. It's very clear, you know, where the restrooms are and this, you know, eateries and all this kind of stuff so i think um one thing i remember um a a former teacher that i had worked with of looking at her handouts that she gave the band i was always like oh wow they're like so clean Mm -hmm. there's like so few words on it but all the information was on there and it was it was satisfying looking at it and i really did appreciate that 
because we all put together handouts and especially if you do an extracurricular activity you're always doing dates and times and pickups and drop-offs and reminders and all this kind of stuff and just trying to be concise yes. um i i take care in that very intentional too very intentional yeah. keeping it one-sided yep. and just make sure everything's there i've stopped um highlighting and bolding good for you if i need to highlight or bold something in my announcements or my hand it's then i have too much right. i don't need to say look here when i'm already handing out an email that's like the people that um title their their um subject and their emails like urgent read now yes it, You're is it, it right. is it yeah it's why you send emails. right so i do like that i also am reminded of when students come into your classroom they want to know what are you going to do today and that's you know, something that's been talked about for decades, right? Are it's we doing anything today? Right. The students want to uh, know yes. what's going to yes, be done today. What can we look forward to? You know, what, what's what materials do I need to get out? Right. Yes. And so having that specifically ready to go, um, you know, just thinking about just but but then also I, I've kind of gone. We've we've done this before, like. In, in jazz band, sometimes I would do my lesson plans as soon as the students leave. I'd get ready for the next day, like as soon as they're leaving. Yes, yeah, you'd um, start typing and, stuff. And put typing things in there. But sometimes I just don't feel like typing the words on the PowerPoint because it's too many words. Like, mm. I can mark it for myself. Yeah. But once it's like, once you have like too many things on your board, it's just like, maybe the kids don't need to need that because you're going to say it anyway. Yeah. Because sometimes the the stuffs on the screen is for you, and sometimes yes. for the kids. Like when we do like our um our concert band slides for sixth period, they probably have twelve words on them. Yes, every day. Right. And we just kind of put what we're doing. Like we put whatever page we're working on or whatever piece of music we're working on. Right. Um, but for jazz band, I'll put more words on, and that's more for me. Yep. And I, I know I teach that by myself, but I'll like I'll say this tune, hit these two things. Yes. This tune hit these two things, and that's just so I remember, right. dude. I. Okay, we've talked about lesson plans on here mm -hmm. before. And dude, I remember my first year, I would like go to town on those, writing those up on Sundays, and like they would look beautiful. If I could like put them on a fridge, it would be like great. Did you type them? I typed them. Dude, I did like the old school documents that like they taught us how to do in college. That was like my whole first year. Really? Whole first year. Yeah. And now. <laughs> At Concord? Yeah. I still have did them in like them? a Google Drive. Did I find. No. Yeah. They just like made me feel good. Right. And, but now it's just like I put my things on the board. I know where I'm going, I know what I'm doing. I'm good. Okay. Work okay. smarter, not harder. Right. So clarity. Clarity. Um, we all we all appreciate being part of an organization or a club or a group that has clarity. Yes. Also simplicity. Denton Sutherland, baby. De Denton, Denton, if you're Sutherland. listening, shout, shout out. out. Shout out, Denton, brother. Texas. You know, um, simplicity. And I remember listening one time I went to some clinic of with jazz educators, and they were saying it's simple. But it's not easy. Ooh, that's good. Right? So, for example, playing the blues is simple. But, I mean, it's simple in its form and its repetition and the amount of harmonies that it uses. Right. But it doesn't mean it's easy to convey it. Right? The concept of playing a certain kind of Latin clave rhythm is simple. But putting that together with an entire piece of music and you know putting it all together is not always easy. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'd like... I do like thinking of simplicity. I also, I think you're, you are good at the, the Kevin Malone thing. Um, I know in marching band, you're really aware of this with your trumpets and mellophones, the high brass students, you're like F concert. Set. Boop. You know, playing that. Then measure one through four. Mouthpieces only. Set. Two more times. Set. You know, and just oh, I love that, dude. Right? Oh, that just give me goosebumps. Right, and and feeling. just and um, because then the kids know, and you know. Right. Sorry, just just, hijack. No, no. There's a and then there's a clear expectation and explanation about what they do, and then let them experience it, and then go back and 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 clean it up. It's true. It's true, man. That's it. And also, you being at the park, you don't want to be reminded all the time of every little thing that's going on you just want to enjoy the yep, the look. view right so okay 
and so I, I think it's kind of uh, this, this is this could be a whole different one to get into. And we've talked about this before about behavior slash student condition in the class. How do you deal with how do you choose to address it when students are talking it in opportune times? <laughs> right. And we've talked about this. We, we talked about this. This was this, was this was this week a little bit. Yeah, exactly. A little bit. And if you say stop talking and the student stops talking and then 12 minutes later they're talking and then you say stop talking and then they stop talking and then 12 minutes later the what they've learned is the only time they stop talking is when you tell them to stop talking so then it's eventually like a pavlovian response correct and i hate that but and, sometimes uh, I fall into that. So Chops Nation, rise up and tell us what you think. Rise. About that. Well, we've got we got ourselves, and by we I really mean me. Got myself into this pickle this week That's with true. with our concert band. And now they're doing they're being kids. This is not like malicious behavior. No. But we've been working a lot in smaller groups, and we've been working a lot on more homogenous things in the beginning of the year. Right. So every kid can move at a very similar pace. Now we're at the year we have our. Um, concert evaluation coming up and we need to be able to play our music and every kid's got a different part and there are some kids that have more difficult parts than others and those kids have been getting more attention this week and now these kids who also happen to sit further away from the director yes. are doing less in class which is just kind right. of how it goes and we haven't been able to kind of as a class understand how this pace goes yep. when kids aren't playing right. so it's a learning experience for them even though it's a quote behavior thing, it's really more of a like a skill. A like skill. how do you yeah, function you about this, yeah. in that class? And Steve and I have done different ways of reminders. And you know, if we were like really intentional and like high planners, we would have found a way to make the other kids' music applicable to them, so it could be a more group participated yes. thing. I was thinking about that yesterday. I was like, I could have done that. But I also, it's still a valuable skill that they need to understand how to be in a rehearsal and just not do anything. Or be engaged without having to speak to other people. Um, that's part of the experience, too. That's real. Right. Yeah, if, if you're reminding, it, it's such a catch-22. And again, I think it would be fun to have a lot of people. Maybe we can talk about this when we do our live. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. shout out next week, April 8th, 8.30 a.m. Santa's coming. We're going live. We're going live. Chops. 8.30 a.m.? 8.30 a.m. On the day of the lunar eclipse? Yeah, dude. We're going to be it a solar fired up. What is it? L mo sol solar. Solar, because it's during the day, right? That's how that works? That's true. It's, but the moon gets in front of it? Is that what's going on? Uh, is it, or the Earth. <laughs> no. Wait. The Earth? We are the Earth. Mars? <laughs> no. I don't know. I got to go to work. It doesn't, I'm let's not just, watching I it. I tell you what. Let's just say this. Pluto is getting way of the sun rays, and so that shows off the moon better. And then that will excite somebody on YouTube say, those guys are so ignorant, and then we'll get comments. Oh, wait. Okay, speaking of YouTube, okay, I don't know if anyone on is, is on the YouTube shorts that listen to this, but, but we post our shorts to TikTok, and we post them to Instagram. We got roasted on YouTube last week. <laughs> we had a reel with Krista Jones, and we were just, like, joking about what it's like to what be a teacher. The, what was well, Krista said, happened? like, her – oh. Well, Krista said it was like it was kind of scary to be the only adult in the room, like her first day of teaching, which every teacher has felt. And like that was the real. And we were just joking about that feeling. And we got some like like comments like they said, I would not put a kid in one of those three and a half people. I didn't even like it didn't even make sense. Right. My favorite was um, I'd rather show them reruns of Reading Rainbow. <laughs> Have those guys got be em! teachers. Wow. That was awesome. Roasted us. We were roasted. That was kind of fun. That was fun. And then the TikToks are all like, oh, my God. I felt the same thing. I love you guys. Ah. <laughs> I kind of was flattered that somebody came at us. I know. It, that it, that's like fun. a win. That's like know, our first like, like time. No, we're grown. That's that good. was fun. Okay. More magic in the classroom. Oh, dude, we should talk about piano. Piano is like Disney, dude. Well, it's like Disney oh, before sure. it got a facelift. Yeah. Right? That room is like so. Okay, but but the kids don't know, and the kids come in, and they're like, wow, this is cool. I didn't know our school had a room full of 20 pianos, right? And they put they turn them on for the first time, put the headphones on for the first time. When you speak into the microphone and they hear you in their ears for the first time, that, yeah. like, blows their mind. And that's, like, fun to experience every time. And then the second day comes, and they're like, wah, wah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, 
Keanu's where magic happens in the school. <sighs> yeah. Why are you making that face? You don't think so? I don't know. Steve, I, talk it out, buddy. <laughs> Let's talk it out, buddy. What yeah. do you feel? Piano. Well, this is going to be awkward because I have kids in my piano class. There. Nobody listens. No, I don't want. I want to. Well, are you going to roast your piano no. class? No. Well, then fine. Say okay. it. Over the last four years, like, okay, in the first 20 years of my teaching, piano class was like the safe zone. It was always like could go in there with a magic wand it was like bippity boppity bacon <laughs> why did that make you laugh so much <laughs> bippity boppity <laughs> bacon <laughs> teaching so, piano class with steve i Peterson. mean it was i don't know it was like so fun it was like i don't know it was like always energetic it was always funny like kids were getting better at piano and then something happened. I don't know what. I, I remember it, you coming to my office like four years ago and you're like, Jack, I lost the mojo. The magic is gone. It was like right around COVID, right? It was. Which like, of course it, it would be. I mean, that makes sense. And I think I just, I probably just never using that edu educational ter ter term. I never pivoted. <laughs> like I just stopped. I I had my flow going and I had my like slideshow. The kids show. changed and you're like, why aren't you changing I, and with I, me? And I was... Oh, that's also with the block schedule, too. Right. It's timing yeah. changed. That's Yeah, that's part of it. So I just kind of had a hard time getting my... It was always like... Um, it always felt like easy teaching the class and kind of getting the, the bang going. Bing, bing, bing. And it, the, the last four years, it's it's been harder and harder to keep the the bippity boppity bacon going and just kind of like the sense of fun and like i i swear like i feel like i'm just being like i'm doing something wrong because of the blank stares that i get and the in the um the lack of like awareness of like how we're participating but we we talk every day like every kid every day i talk to every kid i listen to every kid play multiple times i watch them play we get into thoughtful discussion sometimes, but I just feel like the affect of the room is. Wah, wah. Okay, Steve had a great moment yesterday with the wind ensemble. I did talking about their faces. You remember that? Yeah, I did. That was that was <laughs> epic. I love I love when Steve has something on his mind because he always teaches it. He like never like tells you what's wrong or complains. <laughs> he just teaches. You could like you could call him like a really like mean insult or something and he would go to his class and say okay class look at me <laughs> look into my soul has there ever been a time that you remember and just like goes with it okay but this was steve yesterday go steve go what the face thing oh yeah well i because you're talking about that with piano it's the same thing about this i said okay look I said, look, guys, I get off the podium. Guys, I've started guys. doing that more, getting off the podium. You always take your readers off, and you put your baton, like, upside <laughs> down, and you're like, okay, okay. And I get off the podium, and I spit on kids in the front <laughs> row because they're too close, or I'm too close. But I'm like, okay, do you guys feel like when you come into the band room, you're going to be greeted with a smile? And they're like, yeah. I was like, do Mr. Hinkle and I always meet you at the door? Yeah, you do. Do we, you always, say do we always say goodbye to you? Yeah, you do. Do we come by your stand every day and talk to you? Yeah, you do. Do we like smile at you when we teach and put our eyebrows up? Yeah, we do. Okay. I said, so imagine if I taught you the way that a lot of you choose to look at me. Okay. Um, band, um, F concert. Okay. Oh. Go. That, yeah. Um, that, you band. know, that. That, that was a really that good was sound. Great. That was like the perfect. That was so good. I'm so really cool. excited. Yeah, I'm so proud of you guys. Um, yeah, great, right. great job. Can't wait. So I said, would you be okay with that? You know, would you be like confused? And I said, I want you to be aware of the reflection that you're putting into a mirror because that's the reflection that's coming out to me or to Mr. Hinkle or whomever your, your, your teacher is. But be aware of that energy. And what would that energy look like that you're giving off if your teachers had that? I said, would well, you kind of like sit with that a minute and just be aware? So maybe, you know, some of you have more of a uplifting face. The way you like 
carry your eyebrows. You smile, right? right? You nod your head. Some of you have a more sullen face. Like you choose or you, that's just the way you're crafted. I don't know. that you, you're, you, you're not as smiling. Your eyebrows are down and maybe your chin's down more and you don't make as much eye contact. But I said, can we try to be more intentional about how we look at the people in the room? Because, teachers, the Disney experience is just as much for you as it is, as it is for, for the kids. That's right. Because you create your own theme park every day. You are Walt Disney. You are you're Walt Disney. You're Walt Disney. You're, you're Walt Mickey Disney. Mouse. But like if you have oh a kid boy. I think I was yeah. That was good. Okay. <laughs> if I have I had like when I was a kid, I remember doing this in classes. <laughs> like uh elbow. fist yeah, elbow yeah. on desk, fist yeah. on face, yeah. like smudge cheeks. Yeah. And I don't know if I got called out for that all the time. Right. But I some teachers may be okay with that. I mean, it's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just it is. But I would want a kid to, like, sit up in this because right. I want my own Disney World, right? I want kids looking at me right. because that's, like, where the magic comes for me. Like, if I feel like my kids are engaged, that's magic. Yeah. And right. we can go. Right. We can't. Right. And what, what is that thing that you talk about with Dr. Tim? You can't give away what? Uh, oh, you on, you're only worth what you can give away. There you go. You're only worth what you can give away. And... I, I feel comfortable challenging students on that. Like, oh, yeah. And, and I think, you know, I don't really buy it that we're kind of like wired to be like, mm. I, don't, I don't really buy that. And I think. It doesn't think, matter if you're wired or and not. And I think, I think that you go. can fake it or you can at least encourage yourself to like move towards that. And I don't, I don't want them to feel like we're being insincere. I'm not being insincere when I go up and talk no. to them and like act like a goofball when they right. come in the room. Like that's not at all. Mm -hmm. But, but if you could be aware of how you're giving that energy back, because you are responsible for the energy in the room and the presentation. You are right, and you're, you're a part of it. I was thinking about this on my drive to school today. That teaching has to be one of the careers that the more that you kind of get your system and like built and going just the more it feeds itself and it's like your job gets easier and more fun and more powerful and impactful like mm. right i mean if you're if you're coding like you can you get better at coding and you like figure out more ways to do stuff but you're you're doing the same thing every day and i mean but if you're doing like what we do every day and you build your system and you get your kids acting the way you want them to and they right. start teaching other kids like right. that's like a big deal and I'm not going to say I've reached that, no. but I see moments you of... Have mom you have glimpses. You get it. glimpses, and then the glimpses get bigger, and I'm like, ooh, give me more, give me more. Right. And that's like the that's like the, um, that's like the the high that keeps us coming back. Yep. Yeah. That's big. It's the hook that, that's that, the hook. there. And when kids start buying in and, like, to what you're teaching them, man, that's a good feeling. Right. And so when you go to... So, so then when you go to Disney, you're like, what do you like about Disney? You're like... Everything. Everything. It's cool, oh, man. Right. It's like really yeah, cool. cool. And sometimes it's like low and slow and like you're in a small world after all. And it's like chill. And you're, you know, and sometimes you're on Space Mountain and it's a wild ride. And, and sometimes you're waiting in line, but you're okay because you know that something else is coming yeah. up. Right. Yeah. And so I think the overarching experience is something to, to keep in mind. And maybe that's just like a self check. Like if you were able to hover back or hover above your classroom and say, what is the overall vibe I'm helping create? And I'm not the only one responsible. We're all responsible for the vibe, right? But as the leader of the classroom, we are, we're encouraging them yes, to be a part of it. Yes, we're the most influential. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And I've, I've found I just need to do that more and, like, pull back and look because I get so caught up in the material and, like, what I want to get done. Yes. And I've tried doing that more, making sure I've touched base with every kid at some point during the class or acknowledging them at somehow. But that's real. When Steve warms up the band, he makes eye contact with every kid. Every day, right? You do that. I do that. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun because it's... Because I get ticked off if a kid's not looking right, at me. I'm like, look at me. But you can... But then it's just like down to a few. Yeah. And then some kids like look at you and smile mm -hmm. or some of you, some of them like acknowledge you mm -hmm. or they like stare right back at you, which is fine. And some students do look away. Mm -hmm. They're like bashful. You know, they look. But I think that's we're kind of building a sense of confidence of like looking an adult in the eye. I think it's OK. It's OK. You should. OK. 
Okay, listeners, create your own Disney. Be the Imagineers. Isn't that what they call them? Imagineers. Or WWWD. What would Walt, Walt do. Disney do? WWWDD. What would Walt Disney do do? do? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it's time for spring break for us. Walter. <laughs> Walt. Walter. Say my name. Say my name, Walt Disney. Okay. You sound like uh, Irvin. Irvin. Okay. Um, okay. Well, it's spring break. And then the next episode that you're going to hear that will be released um, around the 16th. The 9th. Uh, the 9th. We're, we're going to be live in the B135 Concord High School Band Room on April 8th. We're going to do two 40-minute sessions. And we have about 25 We people. got 20... 25 in the first one, 30 in the second one. We're going to do a live CHOPS podcast, and, and the overall overall topic is student en- excuse me, student engagement. We don't know where, well, we know where we're going right. to go. And we are going to have some opportunities for people to do some Discu- Q&A, we, we discuss. We want it to be a discussion. We yes. don't want it to be just a a um, shtick. shtick like That's this. what the, every other week is for. Right. So if you want to you wanna be a part of that, come on down. Come yeah. on down to the band room. It's going to be a good time. Yep, don't and for, don't that, so there will be two episodes in that. One will be released um, the following day on the 9th, and the follow, the other one will be released on the 16th. 16th. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So continue to uh, press that like and subscribe button on Chops underscore podcast found on Instagram and on TikTok or on Chops podcast on YouTube or on Spotify or on Apple podcast. Apple podcast. Apple podcast. That's right. Okay. Okay, so um, we're going to go uh, start celebrating spring break. It's real. Spring break! So for Jack Hinkle and Steve Peterson, we're out of here. Bye-bye. See ya.